Hello and welcome back to the Xamarin Forms tutorial where we work on a time tracker app. I'm Patrick and this is the Let's Create series. In this episode we'll work on our version of the Firebase UI for Xamarin Forms and prepare for hooking up the Firebase phone authentication services. So let's get started by adding the phone authentication method. So the first thing we'll want to do is head over to the Firebase console and then in our project overview to the left if we see the develop we'll just go into authentication and we will select sign in method. And now on sign in method, we can click on phone and then we can go ahead and click enable. And then since we're working on Android for now, we will go ahead and click the Android sign in steps and this will bring you to their documentation. And they have a great link here on the before you begin to get the SHA-1 hash for your development key store. I'll leave a couple li links in the description to help you get that SHA-1 hash for the debug key store from Visual Studio. So we'll skip this step here and then you can head over to the description to get those links and follow along there. And then we'll go ahead and provide some whitelisted phone numbers and these are just fake phone numbers so we can go ahead and just use the phone number that they have here. So we can just do plus one six five zero five 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 one two three four and then a fake verification code that we can just use for testing will just be the one two three four five six and we'll click add and then we'll click save and now that we have this in here we can head back over to our project and now back in our project we can change our login page and page model to be used for the login email or login via email and so then we can make other pages and page models for the different login methods as needed and our actual login page and page model will then be used for our implementation of the Firebase UI for auth. So let's head over into pages and make a new page. So this will be a new file and this will be a content page and we'll call this login email page. Once these files are created, we can close the code behind and in our login email page, we can just copy over the page contents that we have for login page. Let's open login page. Let's cut this stack layout and let's paste it in the content of the login email page. With that done, we can close the login email page for now. And now we need to make the login email page model. So let's right click page models, add new class, and this will be login email page model. With our login email page model created, let's go ahead and extend from page model base. Then we'll use a quick fix to import the using, and then we'll head over to page model locator so we can register our new page and page model. So in our page model locator, we can register the page model and the page the same way we did for all of our other page models and pages. And so we should register login email page model and login email page. We'll also want to create a page model and a page for login phone. So let's go ahead and create that page model for login phone. So we'll make a new class in page models. This will be login phone page model. This page model will also extend from page model base. So then we can import the using. And then we'll need to make that page as well. So in pages, add new file. And this will be a content page again, and we'll call it login phone page. With those files created, we can close the login phone page code behind. And let's just put in a stack layout for now so that we have something in between content. And that should get rid of any errors or warnings that you have. And then we can go back to the page model locator and register that page and page model. So now we have login email page model registered to its login email page. And we have login phone page model registered to its login phone page. So now with that done, we can close page model locator. And then for now, let's close the login phone page and its page model. And now we need to migrate the login page model contents over to the login email page model. So let's open login page model. Let's cut all of the properties and the service declarations, and then we'll paste them at the top of the login email page model. And then we'll need to use quick fix to import a couple usings. And then we can copy from the parameter list in the constructor of login page model all the way down to the la through the last method. We'll copy that over, not cut, and we'll paste that to replace the parameter list in the login email page model and below. And then we'll need to import the using again for command, which will be Xamarin Forms. And then we can clean up our login page model. So I'll remove this bottom method and the contents inside login page model and we'll keep navigation service because we need it, but we don't need account service for this page anymore. So then let's save a local copy of that navigation service again. And now we've finished migrating the login page over to the login email page. The reason why I migrated rather than renaming is because we still need the login page and it avoids some of those errors we'll get with the generated files. So now that we have these done, we're gonna want to create a view to resemble the Firebase UI. And so we'll go into views and we'll add a new file and this will be a content view and this will be a login option view. We'll also wanna make a view model. So let's make a new class in view models and let's name it login option view model. 
This login option view model will implement extended bindable object, and it'll control things like the color of the background of the view, as well as the text on the view, and it can respond to a tap on the view itself as well. So let's go ahead and make some properties. So we'll make a private color, and then we'll import Xamarin Forms, and this will be background color. And then we need a public variation of this, so public color, background color. And the getter will return the private member, and the setter will pass the private member into our set property method, and it'll pass in value. And then we'll also want to create one for the text of the view. So we can say private string text, and then make the public version of that the same way we've been doing. The views in Firebase UI also have an icon, so let's make a string to hold that icon. Then we also want to handle when the view is tapped. So let's make an I command for that. I'll just call this command tap command. And then we'll let the user of this view model pass in some parameters in the constructor. So we'll require the text. So in here we can say string text. We'll also require a tap action. So let's make an action and we'll just call it tap action is fine. We'll also require a background color. So this will be color we can just call this one BG color. And then the icon doesn't need to be required, so we can just say string icon equals, and then just an empty string will be fine. And then we can go ahead and set our properties with those passed in parameters. So text equals text. Tap command will equal new command, and we'll just pass in the action. And then this way we can send those events back to the page model that has these view models. We'll set our background color to BG color. And we'll set our icon string to the passed in string, and we're okay with an empty string, so this will be fine. And that'll work for this view model. So now in login option view, we can bind to these properties. So let's make a frame in here. We'll wanna give this frame some width request, and we'll just say 220. Looking at the demo, we can see that has shadow should be true. We should set its horizontal options to center since we're setting a width request. It looks like the corner radius should be something like two or three. And then we'll bind to the background color of that view model. So background color equals binding background color. And then we can give this frame some margins. So the left and right margins can be at least 20. And that's if the viewport is smaller than 220, then we'll, we'll keep a margin on the left and right. And the top and bottom can be something very small, like three. And then when these stack, we should have about six in between. And then in here, we want to stack a layout and its orientation should be horizontal. We should provide a margin on this as well. We'll put a margin of 16 on the sides and something smaller like eight on the top and bottom. And then in this stack layout, we have an icon and we have some text. So this will be an image. Its source will bind to the icon of the view model. We'll give it a width request of 20 and a height request of 20. We'll make sure it's centered vertically and we'll make sure its aspect is set to fit. So aspect fit. Then we also want a label in here and this label sort of looks bold. So we'll just say font attributes equals bold. We'll set its text to the view models text. So binding text. Most of them look like they have a white text color. The sign in with Google method has a, a different text color, but for now, since we're only using email and phone for now, we'll just set text color to white. And let's make sure this is also centered vertically. Now that we have this done, we can save. And now we can start using this view in our login page. So back in login page, let's import the namespace. So we'll just say XML NS views. And then we can say equals views and it should recommend our namespace for our views. And then in the content for our view, we can make a stack layout. And this stack layout is going to have maybe an app icon or something at the top. And then we'll also have our login options. So under app icon, we can just make an image. Let's set its width request to something like 200 and the aspect to aspect fit. And then horizontal option should be center. And we'll give it a margin all the way around of something like 20 is fine. And then we'll bind its source to the login page model. And we can just call this icon. That'll be empty for now because we don't actually have an icon. But for our login options, now we can just stack our new views that we created and bind to them. So let's do views, and then we'll do use a login options view, and we'll just set its binding context to the view model that we'll have in the page model. So this will be login email view model, and we'll make another one views login option view, and this will be binding context is set to binding login phone view model. And then we can save there. Now we'll head over to the login page model and we'll create this string for the icon image source. And then also the view models for our login email view model and login 
phone view model. So back to login page model. Up here at the top of our login page model, we can just say private string icon and then the public version of that. We'll do the same for those view models. So private login option view model and then we'll import the using. And this will be login email view model and then we'll make the public version. And then we'll wanna do the same thing for the login phone view model. And now in the constructor, we can initialize our two view models. So we'll start with the login phone view model and we'll say that equals a new login options view model. And in the constructor of this view model, this is where we can pass in the text. So this will be sign in with phone. We'll also pass in the action for when this view is tapped. So we'll just call this go to phone login. And this method doesn't exist yet, but we'll use a quick fix and that'll generate the method for us. And then we wanna provide a background color and so we can just use color and import Xamarin forms. And then we can just say from hex. And just by inspecting the element in the Firebase UI demo, we can see that it has a hex of code of 02BD7E. We don't need to provide an icon right now. We will when we actually get an icon for these, but for now we're gonna leave that blank. And then we're also gonna do the login email view model. And that will also equal a new login options view model. And this will just say sign in with email. We'll provide an action for this as well, and this will just be go to email login. We can use a quick fix to generate that method. And then this will take in a red color. And by the same way of inspection, we can see that this one has a hex value of DB4437. I'm gonna provide a comment behind each of these to help clarify what color they are. And now we have our view models set up. The last thing we need to do is use our navigation service to navigate to the login email page model when this view is tapped. So we can use our navigation service and then we can navigate to async and we'll navigate to the login email page model. We don't need to pass in any parameters or navigation data. And then we need to make sure our login options view is actually using that command. So let's go ahead and add a gesture recognizer to the frame. So we'll just say frame.gesture recognizers. We'll add a tap gesture recognizer. We'll bind to that tap command that we created on the view model. And now we should be able to run our app, tap the log sign in with email frame, and we should make it to the login page that we used to have. So which is now login email page. So let's go ahead and run it on Android. And with our app running, we can see that we have the two buttons. We definitely forgot to set the padding on the frame to zero. So we'll take care of that in a moment. But if we click our sign in with email, we should go to the login page that we created before and then migrate it over to the login email page. So that works great. If we press the back arrow, we get back to our Firebase UI that we're creating. So let's go ahead and fix this frame and we should be able to use hot reload. So we can just uh, go to the frame, set padding to zero, save, and then we can just view our app and we should see that the buttons get smaller. Our buttons are missing their icons and they could probably be a little taller, but this looks fine to me for now. So let's stop our app. We'll go back to the login page model and we already have our login phone page model. So we can just go ahead and navigate to it when that button is clicked as well. So login phone page model. We don't need any navigation data sent. And now we can start working on the login phone page. So let's go ahead and close everything we have here. We'll open our login phone page and we can start building this out. This is going to look pretty similar to the login email page. It's just going to call a different method on the account service. So let's go ahead and copy the content in the login email page and we'll just paste it right in the login phone page. And then we can change the name from login page to login phone page. The placeholder won't be username anymore. It will be phone number. And then we could even provide some kind of example instead of Username will bind to phone number. The password field isn't going to be say password anymore. It's going to say SMS code. It's not a password, so we'll do that. It's not going to be visible until we have sent the code. So let's say is visible equals binding code sent. And then we're not gonna bind to password. We'll just bind to code. Our login button is going to change from log in to uh, binding button text because we'll change it after the code is sent. The command will change from login command to next command. And then just to make things consistent, I will capitalize the P and the N in phone number. And then we can head over to the page model. So we'll open login phone page model and we'll create these properties. The first property that we need is a string for phone number. The next property we need is a string for code. We also need a Boolean to let the XAML know once the code is sent. We need a string for our button text and we can use a default value here. And the default value can be send code. 
Lastly, we need that I command for the next command. So we'll make the I command. Now that we have these in place, we can go into the constructor and we can pass in the I account service, import the using, and then we'll cache this locally. We can also instantiate our next command to a new command, which will import a using of Xamarin Forms, and we'll pass in an action, and this will just be on next action. To make sure we only send that code once, we can make a debounce or a flag. So we can say if code requested, then we're going to attempt to verify the code that the user entered. Otherwise, we're just going to say the code requested is true. We can use a quick fix to create that Boolean flag or debounce. We'll change the button text from send code to verify code. We'll let the XAML know that the code was sent. And then we'll tell account service to send the code. Account service doesn't have this method yet, but basically we want to tell account service to send OTP code async. And we need to provide the phone number that the user entered. So this method doesn't exist yet, so let's go ahead and copy this signature and open up account service. So we'll open I account service and we'll add a, a method here. This method will be a task that returns a Boolean and they can pass in a string phone number. We can open up the mock account service and use a quick fix to just import the method, but we'll leave it unimplemented. So we can go ahead and close there and then we'll go to the Android project and open up the service there. And we'll also need to import that. So we'll use a quick fix, implement interface, and now we have send OTP code async. And this is where we're going to start with the Firebase phone authentication. I think this is a good place to stop today's episode. Stay tuned for the next episode where we work on the sign-in with phone on iOS and Android, which hooks up to Firebase phone authentication. It uses a sample phone number that we whitelist in the console. We can use a fake verification code, and we can verify to get to our time tracker page. If you like the video, feel free to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, leave them down below in the comments section. Thank you for watching the Xamarin Forms tutorial. I'm Patrick, and this is the Let's Create series.